Hey everybody, how you doing? I sure am happy to get to do this. It gives me a little bit of closeness, closeness to you. Uh, you know, we've been separated. The whole nation's been separated. Matter of fact, the whole world has been separated. And the same is here going on here at the Johnson's house. Now, it's just me and Gina now, so it's not real difficult to stay separated, but we, we do still get close. Now, a lot of people are still having to wear a mask, me included. And you'd think that at my house that mask wouldn't be a problem since Gina's in the dentistry. Well, there's a shortage of a mask. First of all, let me show you what Gina got for me to wear. And, and this this just is not Brad. It don't, no, uh -uh, no, it's not going to work. So I got creative and I made I made my own little mask. I have an old t-shirt and I cut the sleeve out of it. And I made this shirt, made this mask. Now, as you notice, it's got that mouth on there from big red lips and them buck teeth are hanging out. And and you can use it for a lot of things. If I type it like that, it looks like my mouth's moving when I talk. So, you know, then other people it's hard to hear and can hear me. Anyway, that's me and me and myself. You know, separation, it's not a natural thing. God made us to be with people and, and to share things with people. When I was a kid, <clears throat> my sister and I would be getting in a fight and my mom would holler something at us, something like at us, you know, if you guys don't quit, I'm going to separate you. Like that's some kind of threat or something. A lot of people are separated for different reasons. There's war. It's kind of hard to find a war <clears throat> from your home. Somebody has to go somewhere. <coughs> Excuse me. There's there's school and college. You know, some some kids go off to military school or off to a private school somewhere to do their high school. Or when they graduate, they go to a college. And most times they'll move just as far away from home as they can get. Some people are separated by work. We had a had a family in the place where I worked, where Gene and I first went to church. <clears throat> and uh, the man worked here in Chattanooga and lived in Seymour, Tennessee. And he'd get up every morning and drive down here to work in Chattanooga and drive back that night, spend the night, do the same thing the next day. People were separated by divorce it's not natural to do that <clears throat> people are separated by death and here's the thing about death it it seems like a long time separation and many times it is but if you're a believer in christ it won't be that long time now they've come at us with this social distancing stuff uh that, that's just another form of, of separation. Let me ask you a question. What do you think about this separation? <clears throat> me, I don't like it. I like being around people. I saw a t-shirt the other day that was advertised. Somebody was trying to sell it. And it, it said on it in big bold letters, I love Jesus. And then in small letters below that it said, but some of his people get on my nerves. I need people. I need to shake hands with people. I need to hug people's necks. I need to I need to be around them. I need to talk to them. Well, let me ask you another question. What does God think about separation? Well, my opinion, he doesn't like it either. <clears throat> he created people to be with him he created people for him to be around if you'll read in genesis about the creation story every day he came down and spent time with adam and eve uh he he chose abraham's people to uh spend time with that he spent with all his descendants and as we read through the old testament we can see all kinds of different ways that god spent time with people he created us to be with each other. It, he, he's got us believers now, those of us that are called Christians. And if we believe in Jesus Christ, 
then, hey, guess what? We need to be together. That's why we've got church planning. That's why we've got uh, all churches all throughout the area is so people can get together and worship. Now, let me ask you a, a, a third question. Does that sound like separation? Not to me. It sounds to me like close together. I like being with people. I like getting up on Sunday morning and getting ready for church. I like going to church. I like being in Sunday school. Sorry, that was a slip on my part. But I like it. And I like seeing everybody that's at the church that you normally see, even those that may not like me. What can God separate us from? I, I thought I'd study the scripture a little bit and see if I could find anything that God would separate us from. And, and I came across Romans chapter 8. And in Romans chapter 8, down around verse 35, it starts off with a question. What can God separate us from? I'm paraphrasing. What, how can God separate us from the love of Christ is a better way to put it. And then he goes into a whole list of things. And he had, you know, can affliction, anguish, uh, persecution, finance, uh, famine, uh, nakedness, danger, a sword, anything like that. And he goes on and says, no, none of that can. And it says in verse 37, if you'll skip all the way down to verse 37, it says, we are more than conquerors. In other words, we're victorious. <laughs> victorious means we win. We're on the winning side. Paul says in verse 38, <clears throat> He is persuaded that not even death, life, anguish, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Let me summarize what Paul's trying to say there. There is absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. I don't care how low down dog you are. I don't care uh, what you think about yourself. The love of Christ, it, 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 you can't be separated from it. You can't do anything on purpose to be separated from Christ. Even an atheistic person that says there is no such a person as Jesus Christ, there's no God, you can't be separated from that. Now, I've now that I think I've set that down, I want you to understand something. I want you to understand that God loves us more than we could ever imagine. God loves us so much that he, that he has this perfect love system set up. Christ, his son, came. He lived a perfect life. He died for my sin, your sin, everybody's sin, all the people's sin. And he even set up a system that can't separate us from him, from his love. I think that's awesome. Why don't you pray with me right now? Lord Jesus, I come to you now and I want to thank you for, first of all, your love for me. Even when I'm unlovable, you love me. And even when... I do things that, that a lot of people may consider as heinous or terrible. You still love me, and that's available to everybody. I can't wait until we get to go back to your house and we go there and just do nothing else but worship you, but we also get to see each other. I can't wait until this thing's all over to where we can actually meet with each other and hug each other's neck, shake each other's hands, and tell each other face to face that we love you. Lord, I do love you, and I ask these things in your name. Amen. Well, thank you all for letting me share with you, and I hope you enjoy it.